Hey there, everybody, and welcome to another game uh, with myself, Tom Delia of MTG Radio. Uh, we are currently playing a guy I am, uh, I love, called Grenzo Dungeon Warden. Uh, Grenzo is X Black Red for a 2-2 Legendary Goblin Rogue. Um, when he enters the battlefield with X plus 1 plus 1 counters on it, 2, put the bottom card of your library into your graveyard. If it's a creature card, if it's a creature card with power less than or equal to Grenzo's power, put it onto the battlefield. The cool part is from the bottom of your library, so it's not as uh, easy to hit. Uh, so, we're actually playing against another fantastic uh, commander creator out there called Royal Al. Uh, he's playing Krufix out of Horizons. Three green blue for Indestructible 4 7. Krufix uh, is instant a creature unless your devotion to green and blue is greater than 7. You also have no maximum hand size. Let me quickly do this by Rock Null. Let's see if we can put under the. Well, oh, we can put under the Null. Let's see if we get all lands. We get. Oh, man! Dark Seal Pendant is so good in our deck. Shoot. I guess we can put the pendant under here, but I don't expect to ever cast it. We're going to press F8 as long as our lands are tapped, we can, and we can't activate abilities for zero or less. Uh, we will audio the turns, which is perfect. <sighs> the most important part about Krufix uh, isn't the spellbook version part is the if unused mana would empty from your mana pool that mana becomes colorless instead that means you keep all of your mana this deck is filled with cards i believe that cost x or have x's in them or can be pronounced to have x's in them or are cultivate uh, <laughs> uh, i've played against this deck before it's actually pretty good i am uh, i'm definitely aware of what it does our our hand actually isn't that terrible it is very focused on using grenza multiple times in a turn but that's pretty much what we're looking to do bushwhacker is a great draw and uh, we're just going to cast our general uh, you'll notice I cast them for zero, for two. That's because all of our creatures besides six have two or less power. Uh, so we can always hit off a Grenzo. That's the other cool part about being a goblin base deck uh, is that all of our goblins have very low power. Uh, it's actually perfect. It's straight up perfect, which is good. Um, we are playing against some pretty cool decks, though. We have a Chromat deck in the top left. Uh, white, blue, black, red, green for Legendary Illusion. It's a 5-5. Five, five. Is that a Compost? Put it to an opponent's grave from anywhere you may draw a card. All right. Uh, for white, black, destroy target creature blocking or blocked by Chromat. For blue, red, he gains flying. For black, green, you regenerate him. For red, white, he gets plus one, plus one. And for green and blue, you can temporal spring him onto the top of your library. Great spell. Uh, definitely something we're going to watch out for. An early Safi Eric's daughter also uh, spells some hard times for us from this character deck. Safi is a 2-2 two -two for green and a white. You can sacrifice it when target creatures put into your graveyard for the battlefield this turn. Recurring that card to the battlefield. This card is insane uh, with a end of the battlefield themed black, green, white deck, which is what I'm assuming this is. We have a couple of choices here. We can actually just cast Goblin Warrens and look to activate Grenzo twice next turn. And I think that's the most efficient thing to do here. So we're going to attack our top left player for two because he played a soul ring and a compost. The usual reason we do things. Because they played spells. How dare you play spells? <laughs> our bottom right player is leaving up two blue. This deck, I believe, does play mana drain because it uh, returns mana to your pool as an X spell. But if he wants to counter goblin warrens, I feel bad for him. It's going to suck, but I think this is still the correct play here. If he has, if, if by the way, if he has it, I called it. Okay, he didn't have mana drain. Uh, so, Carador is the last general we're playing against. Five black, green, white for Legendary Centaur Spirit. He's a 3-4. Carador costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard, and during each of your turns, you may cast one creature card from your graveyard. Um, uh, again, the last person we are playing against is Royal AL. Uh, he does have his own YouTube channel, uh, also focused on Commander. I have watched it from time to time. It is pretty good. I would definitely suggest uh, giving, it, giving it a look, because it's definitely really... It's, I, I love watching Commander. I know he posts a lot more frequently than I do, so I definitely check it out uh, if you get the chance. He also plays Commander. His decks are a little bit more uh, uh, 1v1 focused, and he has a lot of 1v1 games on his channel, uh, but definitely check it out. I think he does a lot of really good work. The cards we're worried about from Kyodor is actually pretty simple. Um, Deranged Tournament, probably one of the best ones, uh, followed by Revelark. Safi Eriksada with Revelark and Karmic Guide is a loop that's just terrible. Aura Shards? My Goblin Warrens, no.
letting our opponent know that he's a uh, that he's a monster for casting. Oh, Hermit Druid, also incredibly annoying in this deck. Probably the scariest card on the battlefield right now. One in a green for a 1-1. One, one. For a single green, you can tap it to reveal cards from the top of your library until you reveal a basic land card. Put that card into your hand. All other cards reveal this way into your graveyard. If you wanted to fill up your character deck really quickly, this is the way to do it. As far as people we will be attacking for the rest of the game, our top right player is the answer. So, good question. Uh, actually, yeah, Hermit Drew is probably one of the best cards in this deck. Uh, there was a time, actually, which is pretty funny. One second. Needed to sneeze there. Didn't want to blow out your ears. There was a time when the uh, unbeatable deck on Magic the Gathering Online was a Chromat deck. Uh, <laughs> of note. Hey, look. Check that guy out. Uh, that used Hermit Druid uh, to basically put their entire library into the graveyard, and they would win that turn. So let's see if we can get lucky with Grenzo. We have a 40% chance hit rate. Spike Shot Goblin, not bad. We could also cast Armorelli Sphere here. I just want to try and get more creatures on the battlefield, so I think this is better. We don't hit on the second one. We will attack Mr. Fluff and stuff. Good news, Spike Shot Goblin can totally kill Hermit Druid, which is 100% who we will be killing next turn. Krufix is on the battlefield. He will be he will be able to start floating mana off of the mana crypt that he cast earlier. Uh, ooh, just to give you a frame of reference as to what time it is, uh, because people do watch these videos like six months later, uh, it is currently June 24th of 2014. This is after Vintage Masters has been released on Magic Gathering Online, but before Magic 2014 has been released online, or Cons of Tarkir. Uh, both blocks do look very cool, uh, but I just want to make sure uh, you're not saying, oh, why aren't you playing this card from Magic 2014? Because it doesn't exist yet. Holy God. Oh, this doesn't care where it goes? From anywhere, draw a card. Alright, Karmic Guide hits the graveyard. A Divinity of Pride, Secure Tribe Elder, Victimize, Survival... VMA Survival. Bone Shredder and Grave Betrayal all hit the graveyard. Our top left opponent draws way too many cards off of this. This is why we're killing Hermit Druid the first time we get a chance. Just putting it out there. Because this kind of shit happens. Like, what in the world? Also, a Tooth and Nail in there? Yeah, this guy is our number one threat. We will never not attack this guy. Just always, always, always and forever attacking this player. Uh, Karmic Guide in the graveyard is very, very, very bad news. It means he has access to it, which is incredibly scary in this type of deck. Good news, no black mana. None of it. I like that. Bad news. Holy shit, Karmic Guide. Uh, he can save his Hermit Druid by using Safi Eric's Daughter and sacrificing it, targeting Hermit Druid, so that Hermit Druid is in the battlefield. Uh, I actually kind of suspect that to happen. Um, this card is too important for him. Hmm. He loses the flip as he well should in his Mana Crypt. Uh, so the cards we're worried about that just hit his graveyard, uh, there's actually a couple... I'm worried about Karmic Guide again comes back off of Revel Arc. I am worried about I guess Bone Shredder? No, there's not much else. It's just basically Karmic Guide and the madness that happens. Cultivate coming down from our Krufix player because you know lands. You know, because that has an X in it. I'm just, I'm just playing at this point. Look at these beautiful lands. That's even foil? Jesus Christ. Lightning Crafter? You don't say. It's a four-mana spell. Uh, that's really awkward for us right now. I'd actually rather... Let's think about this. I think this is the first thing we do, is we just use Spike Shot Goblin on this Hermit Druid. First step. If he wants to sacrifice it, he can. But this is always going to be the first step for us. So you can pay a red, tap it, deals damage equal to its power to our creature or player. I think it's definitely correct to save it, uh, was to say. Now we could get, we could hit twice randomly with Grenzo, or we could cast Lightning Crafter. Lightning Crafter is a you champion a goblin or shaman, 3-3. Three, three. I think I want to try and hit off of Grenzo. We hit Tuck Tuck the Explorer. Nice. And now we can cast our early sphere or just use Grenzo again. I think we're just priced into using Grenzo again. No one's taking 7 damage anytime soon, so let's see if we can get lucky. We don't get lucky the second time. We will attack both of these at our top right player once again. Uh, Karmic Guide to say Safi both in, the, in a graveyard. Uh, if he manages to just play Rebel Arc, we lose the game. Lose the game is a pretty uh, bad way to look at it. We don't do well this game is a better way to look at it. Also, that compost was sick. That card is usually terrible. 
It is pretty terrible, actually. Not usually. That card, that card is terrible. Uh, I, I do not like this card at all. It's so... These kind of color hate cards, Boil and the like, are so dependent on your opponents playing specific specific colors that I really just dislike them in Commander. What? Oh, Harrow. Okay, sure. I was very confused about what's going on there. Um... So I'm not a big fan of this of this card. It looks like he's going to try and just cast Chromat here, which is not a bad idea. He has a 5-5 five, five for 5. He could also cast a 7-mana cost spell. We could see something like a Chromat Memorial come down, which we notably died to the last game we played with Grenzo. Um, we can see a lot of different things. I'm just hoping it's a way something that kills Hermit Druid. I don't even care if it's a Wrath effect. Go for it. Mole Drifter earning the battlefield, destroying our Goblin Warrens, or Mana Crypt. I think I destroy Warrens. He destroys nothing, because you can't destroy Krufix. Alright, I guess he just didn't want to hit anything. Badoka Gardener is the card of bottom right player Cash. You might not know this card is from Kamigawa Block. One in a green for a 2-1. You tap it to put a land from your hand into the battlefield. If you control 10 or more lands, you flip it. On the other side, he is Doki Weaver of Life. Oh, Dokai, not Doki. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Tap to put an XX green elemental creature token onto the battlefield where X is the number of lands you control. It's going to activate Hermit Druid again. I would too. Oh, what is this for green white? Oh, it's nothing. All right, let's see how many cards this guy draws. None. Sets Tiger goes into the graveyard and he gets the basic forest into his hand, which is great because, again, it's not black, so he see still seems uh, to not have access to black mana, which is great because then it means he still can't cast Kyrador. There's a lot of important things happening. We will still 100% hit this thing next turn. <laughs> like, there is no doubt. Unless he casts something that's better to hit for one. If it's Oracle Moldiah, I will pay two to Goblin Bushwhacker and then kill it. That will happen. We're also getting close to dealing this guy seven damage. Just to cast the Dark Soul Pendant. We Bushwhacker, we can deal him seven this turn, which is pretty interesting. Uh, we can cast Dark Shield Pendant and start putting creatures on the bottom, so we always have a Grenzo. Um, is that worth it this turn is a very good question. I don't think so. I think I just want to... What do I want to do here? It's a very good question. Alright, he won the flip. Gonna let know there's no justice in the world because he won the flip off a of mana crypt. Let's see what he does here. He has next to a time warp on top. Come on, come on, come on, come on. All right, we have a lot of people we have to kill. What is up with this? So can we do something really fancy? We can Spike Shot Elder. Uh, no, we don't have enough mana to also spi to Spike Shot Elder, Elder and use uh, Lightning Crafter in the same turn. That would be sick. But no, we can't. Because uh, then I would be able to also hit the Oracle we'll Die. I can. Ah oh, man. If we had one more mana, we could do something so cool. But we can't because life hates us. All right. Patron of the Aki, you don't say. So whenever it attacks, creatures you control get plus two plus so until end of turn. How does Goblin Offering work is my question. You may cast a card with Goblin Offering. Anytime you cast an instant, by sacking a Goblin and paying the difference, uh, you don't say. So we have three mana to use this turn. That's what I'm looking at. That's all I see on the battlefield is three mana to use. Um, two mana. We're going to obviously spike shot this. Boop. That goes away. Get out of here. We don't like your kind. Uh, we will attack uh, him for two again. We won't attack with Tucked Up the Return because we want to sacrifice it to Patron of the Aki, uh, which means we don't have to pay an extra six. We have two mana left. Uh, we could cast Armorelli Sphere or we could try and hit off a Grenzo. Since we already attacked, I'm actually just going to leave the mana up. Um, ah, man, we're actually low on lands. Oh, we'll, we'll, we'll cast the Sphere here. And then this costs six, sacrificing... To Man, we are going to get so much value. Do you know how much value we're going to get, guys? It's just... Man, I am so excited right now. This is going to be great. I am... 
hopping on my chair. It's going to be so much fun. Of course, our top right opponent is going to cast Living Death by playing Twilight Mire. But hey, we're still going to win. Siphon Mind? It, okay. I will probably just discard Sensation Gorger. This is a card I don't want to play against any of these players. In fact, this guy may be seeing the axe soon. I've drawn him in all the games I've played with this deck, and he's just been absolutely terrible. I've uh, He's not terrible is the wrong word. He's just not been good. Genesis hits the graveyard, which is... Jesus Christ, that's terrible. Oh, vomit in my mouth here. Uh, Genesis, 4 and a green for a 4-4. Four, four. Rare Incarnation. At the beginning of your upkeep of Genesis in your graveyard, you may pay 2 in a red. If you do, return target creature card from your graveyard to your hand. Genesis is... Man, it's a 100% a of Magic the Gathering card. A spell from Magic the Gathering, but after that, hate. <laughs> I really dislike this card. I don't think it's that good, uh, but in specific decks, it's amazing. In decks like this, where he can now return his most important cards to his hand, it's going to be astoundingly good. Um, being able to return Karmic Guide here uh, for three is probably the best thing his deck could do currently. So, we have that to contend with. Of note, we didn't get our armor release fear killed by our aura shards this turn, which I totally forgot was on the battlefield. So, go us! That was a high five from me to you. Let's see what happens here. This game is taking a turn for the... Something's gonna happen. I don't know. I really don't know how to describe it. This is gonna be very weird. I still think it's correct attacking our top right player. Let's see what he brings back. He may think to bring back... Uh, No, no one would do something that silly. Me? No. He gets back Sakura Tribe Elder, so he's real low on lands. So basically what uh, Royal is saying is that he doesn't know uh, what to expect out of this five color deck. And I think that's pretty accurate. Uh, it looks like it's just looks like it's just a really good five color deck. I mean we haven't seen the actual part about it. Alright, our opponent returns to Kura Tribe Elder. He's going to play it, sacrifice it, get a swamp so we can then cast Kerador on his following turn, then be able to start casting creatures from the graveyard, including Sakura Tribe Elder. This is definitely the optimal play for him. There is no X in Time Warp. Oh, extra turns? Oh, Jesus Christ. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, I'm just messing with him at this point. Just having some fun. Alright, so he does get the swamps. So we can cast Carador next turn and then just do ridiculous stuff. Totally looking forward to that one. So yeah, we're just going to keep attacking our top right player. We know Time Warp's on top. I think he has at least one land in hand. He discard Aether Petition to me. Oh, he just floats five, of course, because that's the correct call in, in his deck. So he has five colors, mana. Let's see if there's justice. If there's justice, he takes an extra three damage for playing Mana Crypt. Come on. Justice. Alright. Sylvan Library on top. Library. I say library. This is definitely not a berry. You cannot eat it. You cannot put it in a smoothie. It's a library. Alright. For way too much mana. Or this is probably just time warp. It's just time warp. Alright. Not copied a bunch of times. So successful. 
Let's see if we're all dead. There's a lot of cards that kill us here. Not for five, but for the amount of mana we'll have next turn there is. This new Frontiers? Aeon Chronicler suspended for four. All right. F6. Actually, we won F6. Um, I'm very worried about Moto timings there. <sighs> Moto being the pet name for MTGO, or Magic the Gathering Online. Uh, it's Moto because it was originally, I believe, called Magic Online with Digital Objects. So it was Moto for a while, and they realized that is the stupidest way to call it a game. Uh, name a game. So they decided to stop that and just let people play the game. So he draws Sylvan Library's Juicy Apprentice, uh, which is what I'll draw here. He loses the flip, land on top, just keep telling him about the justice. <laughs> Dirty mana crypt player. Here's a Juicy Apprentice. I'm assuming he's also going to cast a Sylvan Library. Uh, I know I would. Sylvan Library also is the battlefield. Man, just in Florida, I just got used to saying Library. I apologize if it tilts you. I know for some people, hearing Library, like, makes them angry. But, can't do anything about that one. And I wish we had a way to give our creatures haste. Can we kill our top right player this turn? Savage beating Impatient of the Yaki seems really good. Hmm. That's a very good question, Tom. Let's see. I think we can. We're going to have a 5-5. Five, five. That'll be 7. Yeah, we definitely can. Hey, you know what we're going to do? A goblin offering time. Let's sacrifice Tuck Tuck the Explorer. Yeah, baby. Tuck Tuck the Returned and Patron of the Yaki time. Ba-boom, ba-boom. Cha-chang, cha-chang. The way to love. Mm -hmm. Can we kill more than one player is a better question. All right, time for some math. All right. I'm pretty sure we can at least kill our top right player. Uh, the question is if we can kill... <laughs> oh, hush. All right. Um, so he has one blocker. If we attack right now, all of our creatures get plus two, plus oh. We could also... One, two, three, four, one, two. So we can champion the Spike Shot Elder with Lightning Crafter and then play Goblin Bushwhacker to have two more attackers. Uh, we could also... Hmm. Neither of these are goblins, right? No. How do we do this? We could put this on the stack, sacrifice these two goblins... Give them all plus plus two plus one plus zero in haste. Uh, so what? So then we'll have three goblins. So three one ones, three two ones, three four ones. But we won't be able to savage beating in that case. One two three four five. We can't double. We can't entwine savage beating. Hmm. Shoot, this is really difficult. So this is currently seven. Uh, sorry, not seven. Wow, that's totally wrong. This is currently fourteen. Plus 3 is 17, plus 4 is 21. This is 21 damage. We can deal 2 more damage, we can kill our top right opponent. Um, but I don't want to use Bushwhacker for that, that's the thing. Shoot, how do we do this? There's got to be a way to do this. We can just put up, oh, if we put him to 2, he dies, uh, got Mold Drifter, never mind. Yeah, there's no way he doesn't make that attack. So we'll put this guy to 2. Attack with all of our guys. Attack, 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 attack. The one thing Royal isn't incorrect on is that we don't need to attack him. <laughs> um, he's drawing Feral Hydra. He doesn't actually have cards right now. Very possibly draws out of it. Don't get me wrong, but... All right, so he goes at two. All right, he should die to Mold Drifter. Uh, so what we'll do is we'll cast Crystal Ball... Pop the sphere, grab a swamp and a mountain, play the mountain, 
Someone was dealt 7 damage. I'll cast a Darksteel Pendant, because we can. Also, because there's an Aura Shards in play. So we'll cast Darksteel Pendant, because, you know, putting cards in the bottom of our library. We'll stop on our upkeep, and we'll pass. Top right player is at 2. We should be dead the Mold Drifter. I don't know why anyone wouldn't make this attack. Uh, so then we have to deal with 5 color, and this guy at 28. We still have Goblin Bushwhacker in hand. We can now cast Savage Beating. Um, I like where we're at. This can easily go to Hell in a Handbasket, uh, especially if he doesn't kill our top right player. Idyllic Tutor. Oh, okay. I can't deal with Enchantments. For Enchantress... Oh! Oh, that's why he's playing Compost. It all makes sense now. Enchantress's Presence. To an agree, whenever you cast an Enchantment spell, draw a card. Of note, cast. Uh, not when it enters the battlefield or resolves. Literally cast. Uh... Dawn's Reflection, draws a card. This now taps for an extra two mana of any color. Oh, this all makes sense now. Also, um, if he casts Doomwake Giant, we lose. <laughs> That's what I'm getting here. Please don't Wrath before killing our top right player. He can easily get back into this game and lose that too. It's kind of funny that that's a fact, but it is a fact. We were always at 40. Hmm. Maybe we can pull this game out of our ass. We ha we can pull our game. We can we can win this game if Royal keeps missing. I don't know. This is really weird. This is super 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 weird. Animate dead. What? Now he's not going to kill him, is he? Getting back Divinity of Pride. Shoot. This is the worst. This is not good. He's not going to hit him for two. He's going to destroy Crystal Ball. That's what I destroy. He's going to destroy a Sylvan Library. Also a good target. Still has two mana floating. Come on. We should never trust our opponents. We're not dead to him being alive at 2. It just makes the game much more difficult. Now it's also much harder to kill our top left opponent. Mm, poop on a stick. On an actual stick. That's our position right now. Super poopy. Can't pay. Going to cast Carador. I mean, I don't know. I don't think there's a way he gets out of being at 2. So we should be able to kill him. Savage Beating. If if he gets rid of Divinity Pride, I'm pretty sure I can kill top left. So we're basically telling Royal to, if he kills top left, sorry, top right, uh, obviously, uh, the guy too. Jesus Christ, it's all hitting in here, isn't it? So, of note, when you're using Magic Gathering Online, um, it just pulls your cursor to whatever the active window is. Uh, so all the stuff I meant to just tell Royal just, uh, just pops in over here. <laughs> That's hilarious. But if he can kill this guy, we can kill this guy.
How can you not at the moment? You attack him with all your dudes. Stroke of genius? My lord. <sighs> I hate MTGO, man. I don't, obviously. Okay, also justice. So, it should have revealed all the cards that he drew. But it didn't. You're supposed to see them off of Oracle. Do I have his hidden cards somewhere else? I don't. This is weird. I should have seen all the cards that he drew, but it didn't. Whatever. So he stroked it into turn. Uh, I guess it wasn't a good one, because he's already done three cards. If he seriously just attacks him with all of his guys, he should die. That's all he's got to do. Especially if he animates Krufix. With, like, anything. <laughs> he's going to make a big... Uh, Feral Hydra here. One, two, three, four, five, six. If he gets one more devotion, he can activate Crufix. Doesn't look like that's happening. So the reason why I want the Vinny Pride out of the way is Lifelink. That's it. Oh, he got there. All right, so he plays Primordial. He can attack with these three with all of his dudes. All, all of them. All right, he's dead. Give him a good game. Everyone likes good games. Um, let's crystal ball during our upkeep. So we can see what's on top. We will put... Wow! This might just be game all around now. We will put this on the bottom. And this on the bottom. And we will draw a card. <laughs> Holy lord. Holy... Yo. Alright. I think I can kill everybody. I don't even know if I need savage beating. So we can go... He's at 24, he's at 36. How much damage can we deal? We'll have 5 mana left. That's Chieftain. All of our goblins have haste now. We can also go like this. Grab the War Marshal. We can also we can make four dudes with goblin wardens. Dude, can we just kill everybody? This is so much damage. Warrens sacrificing war marshal. Oh, two goblins, right? Uh, and I guess the other goblin we made, giving us three one one red goblins, and let's attack. So all of our creatures getting plus 2 plus 7, let's do some math. He's at 36. He blocks the 8, 6, right? So this is 8 damage blocked. So this is 7. I, I want to see if we can attack Royal for anything. Uh, that's the question. So... I mean, I, I want to see if we can leave a backup blocker, basically. I know we're not going to be able to properly block Primordial Hydra, but we might be able to block Crufix or something. So again, this is 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, uh, 24, 4, 8, 12, 16, 20, 24, plus 5 is... This is going to be close, actually. He might not be dead. I didn't do all the math. I think it's going to be very close. It's possible he's able to wrath. If he wraths... I don't know who it hurts. Oh, Exaxes! Wow. Give him the good game. Force of Will on top. Sure, sure. I knew you were playing World this card. Alright, so it's me and Royal left on the battlefield. We know he has Feral Hydra in hand. We're at 40. He's got an 18-18. I don't think he can kill us. 
This flips. He can make a token. This doesn't matter. All right. All right. All right. The guy we killed is a little bit salty uh, because I told him because all this stuff I meant to tell Royal in confidence uh, got thrown in the actual chat, which is what MCGO does, which is fine. Um, I still think that's the correct play regardless. I know what's in Royal's hand the entire time. Did he draw Force of Will? No, he just activated Windswift Heath. I know what's in Royal's hand, and I know it can't kill us, so I like attacking our top left player. I know it hopefully can't kill us. We don't know about a couple of cards in his hand. Let's see what this is. If it's Feral Hydra, we can win. If it's not Feral Hydra, we lose. Not lose. It just can get really bad for us. He's tapping out for something. Hopefully it's not like Decree of Savagery. Gelatinous Genesis. Ooh, okay. That's... That's a spicy meatball. They don't have haste, though. I mean, you attack with everything, right? Oh, he leaves everything back. All right. He's at 23. We have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9 attackers. He has 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 blockers. So we can bounce one with Sting Scourger. I think we still do this. See if we can put anything good on the bottom. We have Perforos. I think we just want to draw Perforos. Bottom, top. We also know that we're not going to be hitting off a of Grenzo, so we won't activate him. Uh, so we can go Perforos, then we'll have 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, we'll have 3 mana left. So we can go Perforos, put 3 guys into play, pass. Uh, we can also go Perforos, he'll be active. What else can we do instead of that? I think we just still go Perforos and try and live. Uh, we probably kill Oracle or Juicy Apprentice. The question is if we die next turn. This is going to be a... Oh, we can just bounce it with Sting Scourger. So we'll bounce Primordial Hydra. We'll play Perforos. I think that's definitely the, the, the thing we're doing. So we'll, we'll cast Perforos here. Yeah. I never said that. Yeah. I think this is our only route to victory. So we gotta take it. Sting Scourger. Bouncing your Primordial Hydra. Take two. Uh, we will leave up Spike Shot Goblin. We're not going to attack. Uh, we will Spike Shot... This draws a card, right? Yeah. This can put a land into play and flip. So we can't target that. I think we just kill Oracle now. Yeah, we just kill Oracle now. Uh, no attacks, pass. Alright. Anything that doesn't kill us, I'm pretty sure means that we get to live. That was the that was a horribly worded sentence, but... If we can survive this set of attacks, we can deal a lot of non-combat damage. He won the flip! Nah, we need him to not win the flip. Let's be honest here. Let's see what he does. There's probably ways he wins the game. He just drew Blue Sun Zenith, so he can draw a lot of cards. He drew his final last card off of Aeon Chronicler. He laid a land, correct? Laid a Reliquary Tower. Already got one of those in play. <laughs> Alright. Hmm. This is super weird. We know our first hit off of Grenzo doesn't work. Can we even bottom a card is a good question. I don't know. 6, 7, 8, 9, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. We have two extra creatures on him. I don't think two creatures can deal 21 damage, though. 
We have two trades, which is nice. We can trade with Tuk Tuk the return, and we can trade with Perforus as far as if he attacks all the oozes. But then we still have to block in a bad way for us. Leyline of Anticipation could be very important for him. Two double blue is in your opening hand. Beginning on the battlefield, you may cast online cards while they have flash. This is some pretty interesting attacks. I don't know why you'd ever attack with this here. Krufix comes in. That's why he casts Leyline. Four, four, six, sixes. All right, this forces us into some blocks that we didn't want to make. Uh, this is going to get really huge. So blocking it with Patron is actually pretty bad. Um, block. Block. Right, so that ooze didn't attack for some reason. Block this because it gets huge. This is 18 plus 2. This is still just 18. Um, does he have a way to make these guys bigger? Let's think. Strength of the Tejuru is a card he probably has in his deck. Uh, do we play around him not having Strength of the Tejuru? Uh, we know he has two Hydras in hand. So there's two other cards we don't know. We know he has two Hydras and... Uh, Blue Leyla, uh, blue Zenith. So if the last card is Strength of Azure, we lose the game here. I think I'm okay with that. I want to keep as many goblins as I can. So we'll take this trade, and we'll kill that. We'll block this, because he can get super big. We'll take 18. Do you? Are you lucky enough to have Strength of Azure be the last card in your library? Be the last card in your hand. Are you that good? He's not. We're at 4. So we know he has two Hydras in hand. We know he has blue Zenith. Mana is the last card. Alright, so he has two Hydras and Blue Zenith left in hand. And he's going to cast the last Hydra. So we have to beat this board. I think we can beat this board. So he has five blockers, basically. He's at 21. Primordial Hydra, big Mana Plasm. Our turn. I think he's dead. Do we scry is a good question. 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2. Um, I don't think we scry. So, oh, uh, oh, shoot. Oh, we messed up big here. We wanted to sacrifice this with Goblin Warrens before we had to sacrifice it. Ah, oh, damn it. Ah, oh, we went too fast. That's my fault. Draw a land. That was really, really, really bad. Um, well, now we can get an extra two damage out of Spike Shot Goblin, which is kind of funny. So we can go, like, let me do the counting again. Sorry, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So, yeah, we can go like this. We can kill a blocker. I think I'd rather kill Apprentice, because once again, if he, he doesn't have a land in hand. He has Blue Sun's so we can kill. Uh, it doesn't really matter. I guess this might be more important. So we'll kill this. One, two, three. Goblin Warrens. Sacrificing Spike Shot Goblin and a Goblin. He gets dealt six. He's taking 12 just from Perforos. We'll move auto yield so we don't get messed up by MTGO. We'll sacrifice these two to put more guys into play. He's at 11. He's at 7. He should be dead. He should be dead. Everything haste and plus one plus o, Take an extra damage. And we win the game. Boop! Give him that good game. <laughs> Those puns, baby. So Goblin Warrens, great when you have Perforus. And he didn't have Strength of Jura as the last card. I will take it. <laughs> take it every single time. And he takes a lot of damage. Wow. Negative 24. Alright, we won the game. I rarely get to post games where I win. This is fantastic. 
All right, so there there we go, guys. Uh, that was a game with Grenzo Dungeon Warden. Uh, the deck list for this deck will be below. This deck is actually, I think, really fun and really good. Uh, Grenzo is a messed up card. <laughs> this card is silly, especially when you get to use Scry with him. Putting creatures on the bottom, as I showed in that last turn where we just got to quote-unquote go off, makes Grenzo amazing. Uh, just knowing what you hit with Grenzo lets you really choose what happens. The only bad part about Scry is that when it's a land, it gets really, really, really awkward. Because uh, then you know there's a land on the bottom, and blah, as you saw in another part of the game. I do really like this deck. I would heavily suggest it, especially if you're a fan of goblins, or if you're a fan of tribal decks, or just a fan of having fun. I love having fun. So, thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, my name is MTG Radio. My name is Tom Delia of MTG Radio. I both stream and play. Ma I both stream and play Commander. I hope you had a bunch of fun watching this. I had a bunch of fun playing it, and uh, I hope to see you again soon. Of note, uh, the reason why I haven't been able to, uh, you haven't seen many videos on this channel is because I am currently in nursing school, so I don't really have much time to actually record uh, play games, or at least as much as I would like to. So, have a great day, and thanks for stopping by.